guys? Today I want to do an unboxing video for the SP140. This is version 1.1. Um, this is a 2022 version and we're just going to unbox stuff. Some stuff's changed versus from the last version. That's why we'll go over that now. And depending on your configuration, um, this is a standard configuration with the, the large battery and the frame. Um, you can order it without a harness. You can order it without a battery or charger. So some of the stuff's going to depend, but this is the standard setup what most people get. So I'm going to go ahead and box this here and lay it all out. So now we got our frame unboxed and we got our power pack unit right here. We got a charger in this box and we got our main frame. This is all in the half configurations. These pieces here are just for shipping and protection. And you can also use them later on if you want to transport stuff again. Um, just keeps protection here and it keeps these spokes protected from any impacts. So we can go ahead and pop these off. And then we're just going to go ahead and cut all these zip ties um, on the side. So these will just allow us to pull this whole section off. So now we got these zip ties off. You can see how this just clips on, right? Clips on those frames. So we can pop these off and now it's off and we can go ahead and remove the zip ties and remove the rest of these clamps. Now we got our frame undone, we can go ahead and just slide it in for now. And we'll just slide these two pieces together. You'll see how those clip in. And then later we can use our Velcro straps to make sure these are nice and tight. So we'll set the frame aside for now. All right, so now that we got our frame unpacked and put together here, we can go ahead and move on to getting the whole hoop and net assembled. So obviously we have our hoop box here. We have our gooseneck bars, we can set those aside for now. We're just gonna need our carbon fiber spars and our hoop, and we can go ahead and put the frame together. All right, so now we can go ahead and get our net unwrapped here. And unfold it, and I just like to lay it out in the grass so we can get an idea of what's going on. So now that we got our hoop laid out in the yard, um, we can go ahead and move on to our spars. So our, we have three different sizes of our spars. The medium size goes right up on top here. So you can slide those on. They just slide on. And then we go small next, smallest size. And we go ahead and put the longest on the bottom. All right, so now we got our spars on. We can go ahead and just move it out here. Get a little space so you can see. We can grab our net that we have laid out. I like to start from the top and kind of work my way down. Um, so it holds it up for us. We're just gonna slide those in the slot spars there. Slide them in. And then we can work our way down. Make sure our net's in front of the spars. Slide these in. And then I like to just attach here at the bottom so we can slide these uh, bottom nubs in and then work up. A little bit of tension and we can just kind of I like to tap them in they'll need a little bit of juice which is nice and tight which makes it so there's very little movement and slide those in nice and tight and then you can see so we'll do the same thing to the other side slide the bottom in make sure this nets in front and then work our way up here A little bit of encouragement. All right, so then go ahead and get this, these side pieces on, push them nice and tight, and then we can come up to the top and finish it up up here. So I'm gonna take these two pieces, slide them together also. So now we got a nice stiff cage, but now we can just go ahead and tighten the net up. So I'll flip this around and I'll show you that here in the back. Grab our two hooks on the side and we're gonna slide this through the slots here. And 
We'll connect those together. And then we'll just go ahead and tighten this up. Give it a nice tighten. We want a nice stiff net. And then you can hear here, it's pretty stiff. So nice and tight and that'll keep us safe and keep the line, your wing lines out of the, the prop. So there's our frame. So now that we got our frame assembled, we can go ahead and open the charger just to show you real fast. You can see, um, this is the US plug version. And then next we got our power pack. So this is our motor, our ESC, our controller for the ESC. All right, so this little package here has our some of our bolts in here for the prop. Put that aside. And we can go ahead and pull this whole motor system out. So this is our power pack. Um, you got your battery connector on this side and you got your throttle controller connectors here. And then what else we have in this box is we have this prop washer. So this keeps our prop on tight. So set that aside. And then we also have our throttle controller back here wrapped up. All right, so we got our throttle controller here. Let's set that there for now. All right, so now that we got our motor unpacked, we can go ahead and get ready to mount it to the back of our frame. Uh, this pack has all of our nuts and bolts to do that. So now that we got our envelope unpacked here, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our four motor standoffs and these four long bolts. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna get um, our four bolts in here in the back of the frame and just slide these up through our motor system. That one there. And here, pretty straightforward. So now that we got those on, we can go ahead and take this whole power pack to the back of our frame and mount it. So what I like to do here is there's gonna be four middle holes here. So between these three, these three uh, eight millimeter holes, that's where our, our motor bolts are gonna go. So we can go ahead and just place them there. And for now we can just hand tighten these bolts on and they'll stay. So now we're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket and our Allen key. And we can just go ahead and put this in the front. Uh, now we got our stuff hand tightened on there. We can just go ahead and tighten it up with our wrench. So give it a nice snug on all four of these. All right, so now that we got our four motor standoff bolts in, uh, we can go ahead and move down to these two bottom standoffs. They'll just go in these two small holes here. And that's what our battery is gonna rest on. Now we're gonna grab our two ABS standoffs here for the battery, our shorter bolts, and our two nuts here. And we're just gonna install these on the bottom. So what I do with this uh, flat side, I'll go ahead and install the bolt right there. We'll do the same thing to this one. And then we can go ahead and just place this in the hole and tighten it up. All right, so we'll make sure these flat sides are up for the battery to rest on. And I'll go ahead and do that for both of them. All right, so next step, we're gonna grab our th throttle hand controller here, and we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and zip tie um, going up through our frame. We just wanna make sure the zip ties are nice and tight, so if we fall or something like that, um, you're not gonna yank the wires out. So first thing that I do, I slide it through this hole right here in the back. So we'll put our controller in front. Uh, this is for a left hand controller, which is the, the normal setup. And we're gonna go ahead and take um, these wires here. There's two sets of wires and you can see there's an orientation to them. So this side we can see the four pins and this side we see the three pins. And you can see here, we don't see any pins at all. So when we're facing the back of the motor, we want the pins facing us. This is the orientation we wanna plug them in. So you can see our negative down here, our positive up here for our leads. For a reference point, we're gonna take the connector with the red, black, and yellow and plug it in the bottom. And make sure you don't flip it around like this. We wanna see the pins when we're looking at the back here. So slide that in, make sure it's nice and tight. Do the same thing to the top one. Slide that in, make sure it's nice and tight. So now that we got our throttle controller plugged in, we can go ahead and grab some of our zip ties here. And I like to give a little bit of slack for this connector. We don't want any stress on it. Um, we want to keep it nice and tight if we can. So what we can do here is wrap it around. I like to do this, this uh, ESC plate. We're going to tighten it up nice and tight. So that is going to keep any movement from up here going down into the connector. And we're going to go ahead and put another 
zip tie up here through this hole. So go ahead and zip tie up here. Make sure it's nice and tight. So that'll keep the wire from getting yanked out if we're running around and we fall or trip or something like that. So we can go ahead and just cut those zip ties and we're good to go to move on the next step. Then for your next step, you're gonna need your two titanium gooseneck bars, your uh, D-ring shackles, your M8 bolts, nuts, and some of your washers, and also your carabiners. And we're gonna prep our gooseneck bars by sliding in our small M8 bolts, get our plastic washers, slide those on top of our bolts, and then we can go ahead and slide these in to the side of the frames. So we're gonna take our gooseneck bar with our washer and slide it in the side. And we can put a nut on here. So now we got our two gooseneck bars in and we can go ahead and tighten up the bolts on either bar. Now that our gooseneck bar is all tightened up with our lock nuts, um, they should move freely. You just want to snug them up enough. You don't want them stiff or anything like that. They should move with very little effort. So now that we got those mounted, we can go ahead and move on to mounting our harness. So now we can go ahead and grab our harness. I like to start by mounting um, the top of the harness. So we're going to grab these two straps here and we're going to slide them between these bars on the top and we'll run those through. So we'll run that through, tighten that up until it's nice and snug and then run it through this bottom piece right here back through that bottom. Then once that's nice and tight like this one, we can run this strap and run it through the top of this shackle again and pull that nice and tight. It's kind of hard to show with one hand, but you'll get the idea. And now that we got these two straps nice and tight on the top, we can go ahead and work our way down the harness and connect these next lower leg straps around the frame here the same way we do it on the top. And now that we got those straps tightened up on top and on the side, both sides, we can go ahead and move onto our shackles. So what we're gonna do here is these red loops are gonna run through the shackle and through this hole here. And now that we've got both of our shackles on there, nice and tight, we can go ahead and take our safety rings and run those through the holes on the shackle through the, the base of the shackle. And that keeps this bolt right here from coming undone. With our two safety rings in, our gooseneck bar shackles, we can open the side pouch and get our two soft links for our arms here at the top. We're gonna to take our soft links and we're just gonna place them and pull them through themselves as a little knot. Again, hard to do with one hand, but pull them up through until they're nice and tight. And that's how we're going to hook in our carabiners through this hole here. So now with our soft links installed on the arms, we can grab our safety strap and hold this up next to here and just run a carabiner through both of these. So we're just going to run the bottom of this through both those straps. And when you're done, it should look something like this. So now we got our gooseneck bars all hooked up with our carabiners attached and our soft links, our safety ring on the shackles. We can move on to the final step for our harness here up in the front. And this is just for comfort. Um, it's not necessary, but I like it. Uh, you're gonna take your shoulder strap here. It's this long strap that comes and you're gonna run this through your bar here at the bottom and this will connect to the bottom of our frame. And that just keeps our shoulder strap from raising up too high. And then for the final step of our assembly for our frame, until we can power up, we're just going to run these Velcro straps right through these two slots here. And that'll hold our two halves of our frame extra snug. Then with those final straps tightened, we can go ahead and move on to our first power up. So now we're just going to slide the battery right here in the back. We're going to slide it straight down and lock it in place. And then we can go ahead and plug it in. And now with our battery slotted in the back, we can go ahead and plug in our connectors here. And one thing to note is in this, in this connector, there's a resistor on the first half. So if you only plug in the connector halfway, all that power is running through the resistor and it'll heat up. So you can wreck your connectors if you don't plug it in all the way. So make sure you plug it in 
halfway and then make sure you plug it, plug it in all the way. Or else on uh, your first power up, you might fry that resistor in there. So and then we'll go ahead and plug this in. Again, this is pretty hard to do with one hand, but I'll try my best. See right there, I'm only halfway plugged in. It's turned on, but that power is running through the resistor. So if we were to spin our motor up, um, something like that, all that power would be running right through that resistor and create some heat and uh, fry your resistor. So make sure it's plugged in all the way. So that's what it looks like when it's plugged all the way in. And then our controller will turn on, our unit will beep um, its startup sequence. And now we can go ahead and take a look at our controller. We can pull the screen protector off if we want to. And then you can see here, we're in chill mode to start. We can see our voltage, which is 84 volts. That's a good storage voltage. It's right around half. That's what we want. We can see our altimeter, our percentage, all that stuff. And if we want to go ahead and arm our motor and just do our first spin up, we can double tap this at the top, this button right here at the top. It beeps, it vibrates letting you know it's armed and this blue bar at the bottom will show up letting you know it's armed so now if we press the throttle you can see the motor spins drawing and if we want to do cruise control just to test and walk around or something like that we can hold it down hold down the arming button until it vibrates lets, it, lets us know it's doing cruise and this yellow bar shows at the bottom so I could walk around um, while the motor's spinning. Obviously you want to do this first and get familiar with the motor while you don't have a prop on or anything like that. And then if we want to disable the arm we can just tap the tap the throttle here. And with the first power up out of the way that concludes the assembly of your SP140. Um, you can now do your hang test and mount your prop and do your first powered run. And this is the the prop mounting plate. Very similar to many other paramotors and you can go ahead and torque your bolts down. Those bolts are here in this bag that were in the power pack. And with those tightened up um, to seven newt meters is what EPROP calls for. I generally just tighten by hand, but if you haven't done it before, uh, maybe this is your first paramotor, you can torque it correctly um, how you feel. So that concludes the, the assembly of B1.1 frame and motor. So let me know if you've got any questions. And we'll see you guys in the next one. And another thing to note, if you guys have any questions about assembly still, you can watch the previous video of the SP140 assembly. I'll link that here and uh, that should answer some questions like mounting the props and your first powered run up. So, all right, we'll see you guys. Peace.